Worldwide, prematurity remains the leading cause of mortality and morbidity in children under 5 years of age. And there have been no significant change in rates of prematurity in the last 20 years. There are some simple steps with proven benefits that we can all take to reduce the incidence of death and serious complications following preterm birth. The Prem Prep 5 highlights five areas that can be easily adopted by anyone to improve outcomes. It's designed to help you recognize when these steps are helpful and how to carry them out. If you are concerned that labor is very likely to commence before 34 weeks, administer a first dose of steroids via an intramuscular injection into the thigh. The exact dose depends on which preparation you use, so remember to confirm this. Things that might make you concerned labor is likely to start include intermittent abdominal pain that is progressing, the water is breaking, or being able to see or feel on examination that the cervix is opening. A second dose of steroids should be given if undelivered after 24 hours. You could consider giving it at 6 or 12 hours if the labor is progressing more rapidly. If you have decided to deliver the baby for medical reasons, then aim to complete the full course of steroids within 7 days prior to delivery, as long as this is safe for mother and baby. Giving steroids can help reduce serious brain bleeds, lung complications, and infant death. If labor commences before 30 weeks, then you should administer 4 grams of magnesium sulfate via a cannula over 20 to 30 minutes. If no cannula is available, administer the same dose via a slow intramuscular injection into the buttocks. This must be done slowly over at least a 5-minute period. Where possible, a 1 gram per hour continuous infusion maintenance dose can be considered for up to 24 hours or until delivery if sooner. Administering magnesium sulfate will help to reduce brain complications. When a preterm baby is born, you should delay clamping the cord. As soon as the baby is born, stimulate them by rubbing with a towel. If the baby responds to stimulation, then delay clamping and cutting the cord by at least one minute whilst keeping the baby warm. If there's no response to stimulation, you can check the baby's heart rate. If there's no heart rate and someone can resuscitate the baby, then clamp and cut the cord. Otherwise, continue to wait and clamp and cut at least one minute after birth. Only consider cutting earlier if someone is available to help with resuscitation. Another reason to consider clamping the cord immediately is if the mother is bleeding heavily and requires immediate medical assistance. Delaying cord clamping may improve hemodynamic stability and improves the chances of the baby surviving. You should encourage the first feed within an hour of birth, and this should be breast milk. The baby can be fed either by breast or by expressed breast milk via a nasogastric tube or cup. Ensuring babies are fed with breast milk whenever possible reduces the incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis. Kangaroo care where the baby is held against the chest of a parent or carer should be initiated as soon as possible unless the baby cannot breathe by themselves after initial resuscitation or is in hemodynamic shock. You can offer continuous kangaroo care 24 hours a day, but should make sure baby has this for at least 8 hours every day. Benefits of kangaroo care include reductions in all of mortality, infections, and hypothermia. It also helps to promote breastfeeding as well as helping moms and dads bond with their baby and build confidence looking after them.